I wanted to get James Dillingpole on last week when I saw his article. He's an English columnist, best-selling author, novelist, novelist who writes for, among other publications, The Times, The Daily Telegraph, and The Spectator. He's published many books and novels and political uh, books as well. He describes himself as being a libertarian conservative. James is the winner of the 2010 uh, Bastot Prize for Online Journalism, jamesdillingpole.com. And I always read his stuff in the London Telegraph. Uh, and the reason I wanted to get him on is I saw this headline, 97% of climate activists in the pay of big oil. Shock, another one, Halliburton, bleed, Halliburton bleeds guilty to destroying evidence after Gulf spill. That's just some of what we're going to be going over with him today. Uh, but it's been four years since the Copenhagen event when we got the emails of them all you know, basically meeting with the UN and universities to, to fix things and hide the decline in temperature. Uh, and uh, since then, just more and more has come out where Pachari is shutting down uh, steel plants and coal plants in England and then getting money to move them to India or uh, Obama pays 21 billion of taxpayer money to ship General Motors to China. Uh, I mean, they're not just shutting us down. They're having us pay to be shut down to collectivize us. And now they've got 101 million Americans on some form of food assistance. Uh, people are waking up to a certain extent, but does it matter if there's no jobs? And the regulations are written where you go on the government dole. Uh, so I want to discuss that with him as well. But, you know, I personally and my family and my wife, you name it, get zero money from oil, natural gas. I own no stocks. Uh, I mean, I've got some family that's got tiny gas wells on part of their property where they get like, you know, 500 bucks a month or something. But it's actually natural gas I find on average lobbying to shut down coal, too, because they're in competition with it. Uh, the coal lobby ought to pay me some money, I tell you what. But I, I promote coal because it's clean burning now. All that comes out is water and carbon uh, dioxide. So they listed carbon dioxide as toxic. And But China has no controls and builds three new ones a week, while we have more than three shut down a week. And our power prices go up and up and up. They've shut down three of the Austin-owned power plants in the last five years. And they're shutting the final one down. And they admit in the paper our power prices have doubled in five years, doubled, doubled. And I mean, you talk about hurting poor people. It's like Obama with Obamacare raising payroll tax. I mean, this is devastating stuff. And just watching America be turned off is painful to me. It's very, 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 very painful to see this happening. And so I wanted to get James Dillingpole on about that because their only response of the fake environmentalists to ignore all the serious issues like overfishing, open air genetic engineering, things I have a real problem with when they're not done properly, is you work for big oil and they just say it as a mantra. And then every time I turn around, it's BP, uh, it's Dutch Royal Shell, it's Exxon Mobil, it's Texaco, it's Valero, uh, it's, it's funding it, underwriting it. And I learned they're shutting down coal. They're shutting down all their competition. They don't want new refineries built. They own all the, this has come out in the Associated Press. They really, they didn't just hijack it. It's like, well, of course they're trying to fund us to control us. No, no, no. They made the modern environmental movement. And Dilling Pohl's done some major research on this. And it just shows what an incredible double cross this is and how the big oil companies try to use environmental laws to shut down the smaller wildcats too. So it, it, it's really amazing. James, thank you for coming on with us to talk about this. And I want to, in general, get into other things uh, that are happening in the collectivization and how we try to turn that around and where you think Obama's going. But first off, let's get into your article, 97% of climate activists in the pay of big oil, and, and, and explain how this works from your research perspective. Well, Alex, I, I think we, we, we take with a pinch of salt that figure, 97%. I was using it to mock this claim, which you must have seen widely relayed on the internet and constantly constantly put out by the warmest that apparently... That big oil no, funds 97% of people well, saying oh, it didn't, yeah. Yeah, but we, we, the, the, the environmentalists are always telling us that 97% of climate scientists believe in, in man-made global warming. And when you look at, look at the number of st scientists who actually believe this stuff, it doesn't stack up. It's basically the result of rigged surveys. The first one... It's a small I, amount of UN insiders. 
Well, exactly. You, you, you look at the figures and you realise that it's something like about 75 climate scientists said, yes, I think that I think that uh, man-made carbon dioxide is, is, is contributing to climate change. Well, almost everyone thinks that. It means absolutely nothing. Of course, uh, it's possible that, that, that CO2 contributes to climate change. But sure, sure. I mean, so I understand what? it's tongue-in-cheek in your article, but you actually yeah. link to where they yeah, – most of them are funded by big oil, though. It's certainly true that the, the oil industry's record in uh, in the war against environmentalist nonsense has not been good. You you mentioned the the BP oil spill. I mean, let's let, let's let's deal with that one now. Why did the BP oil spill happen? It's because in the uh, in the nineties. BP decided that it would, would greenwash its image. It would rebrand itself as something called Beyond Petroleum. And it would, it would start pushing for renewables and it would start investing heavily in the solar industry and get away from this dirty oil which was, was killing the planet and it would, it would be green and caring and nurturing. Well, the fact is that once you, once you stop uh, once you give up on your core business and start going down this crazy environmentalist route, certain problems arise. And one of the things that BP did was it cut back on its on its core business. It cut back on health and safety. Over a period of, of five years, it had three major accidents culminating in the BP oil spill. Why did this happen? Because it was pretending to be a green company. It should have stuck to its business and uh, acknowledged that, it, that, that it, it was, it should stick to what it's good at, which is, which is drilling for oil. And there are countless examples of this from across the, across the energy sector. I mean, the, the, the article you, you, you quoted was about a guy called Dana Nucitelli. Now, Dana Nucitelli, Nucitelli is, is one of the Green Movement's attack dogs. He writes a column in the Guardian newspaper, one of the greenest newspapers there is, always putting out Enviro scare stories. And no one puts out Enviro scare stories more aggressively than Dana Nucitelli. Anyway, what this guy has been keeping very, very quiet is the fact that he works for, guess what? An oil company, uh, oh. a, co a company called Tetra Tech, which is heavily involved in, in, in mining and oil exploration. Now, strangely, he didn't think to mention this. To well, look at Al Gore and, uh, and, and, and Occidental and, and, and all that. I mean, it's incredible. Al oh, Gore is a absolutely. huge oilman. Yeah, exactly. And, and and where did where did where did Al Gore sell his his um his TV company to? He sold out to to Big Oil, much to the delight of um some of his his green acolytes. But there was another example in the in the news the other day. You remember Professor Phil Jones, the guy at the Climatic Research Unit, one of the stars of the Climate Gate email. Yes. You remember, you remember him? Well, I found this glorious, this glorious picture of, of Professor Phil Jones, a sandwich between some Saudi oil men. This guy has now landed himself a gig at the Center of Excellence for Climate Change Research, Department of Meteorology, King Abdul Aziz, uh, Abdul Aziz University, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Well, let's stop right there. I'm sure that's in a new article you did. Give us the headline. We'll put it in for TV viewers and, and so for radio listeners can find it. What's the headline? Well, it's um, let's, let's have a look. It's 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 at a site called Tall Blokes Talk Shop. Professor Phil Jones and King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. So Professor Phil Jones and uh, Saudi Arabia. Just type that in, guys. It'll come up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's the hypocrisy of these people beggars belief. They're, well, don't they just get involved in this so that the big oil and big groups can choose the winners and losers? Because I mean, the AP back in 2000 reported that the top 10 big oil met and said. Let's actually fund Enviro groups to shut down new refinery construction so only we have refineries to create an artificial bottleneck. I mean, that's when it's, I first learned about this. Yeah, I think it's true of big corporations generally that big corporations are the enemy of free markets. They are the enemy of small businesses. They love regulation. They love big government because they can wear all the compliance costs. That yeah, they can navigate costs. it and nobody else can. 
Exactly, and they can move their move their operations from country to country to circumvent this. This is this is the great advantage of being a multinational. They can get away with stuff that small local businesses cannot. They use regulation as a way of shutting down their competitors. So it's in their interest that they've got all these kind of greenies campaigning campaigning to to for more regulation. They are not our friends. They are not the friends of the little man. It is, as you rightly say, a stitch up between governments and corporations. And we are the people who suffer. You mentioned earlier President Obama and, uh, and the, the rising energy prices in, 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 in the US. Now, you remember a few years ago, President Obama gave a, 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 an infamous speech where he talked about how energy prices would necessarily skyrocket. Just look up. Obama skyrocketed. And he said, if you start to build a coal plant, we will bankrupt you. Yeah, he wants energy to get more expensive because of this, this greeny mission, that the, the idea that energy is somehow bad for us, that we shouldn't use air con, we shouldn't use refrigerators. Well, that's like all. telling the Africans they can't have it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, and, and, and also, the energy industry generally, you, you have, for example, uh, Gazprom in Russia, Gazprom, the biggest natural gas producer in Russia, is busy funding the anti-fracking industry because they see it as a rival. Then you've got... Exactly. The Stay there. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. I've learned that big oil's funding the anti-fracking movement, and I'm not for some fracking. Some people do do it wrong. It, 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 it is. It, but the point is they're hyping it to shut down wildcats. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Thank you for joining us on this August 2nd, 2013 Friday Worldwide Broadcast. I'll be back this Sunday live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with a Sunday transmission. And back tonight with InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock. For everybody at InfoWarsNews.com or PrisonPlanet.tv. James Dillingpole, syndicated columnist at Rice London Telegraph. And, of course, best-selling author joins us. Now, you were just getting into something that real libertarians and conservatives and, and freedom lovers, for me, is the number one mission. Just what I've discovered in 18 years, it's like discovering you know, the, the, the sun comes up in the morning. It's just a, 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 a fact that big mega money almost always teams up with government to shut down its competition and create controlled markets. And if you see billionaires that made their own money, the system will all organize against them and go after them like a pack of piranhas. Uh, and this is the message we've got to get to the left, who is anti-wealth. They don't even understand. It's the ultra-rich uh, allied with them and this collectivization to make them dependent because they don't want competition. Uh, so please continue with the uh, yeah. uh, just incredible... Uh, n not even hypocrisy, but the organized takeover of the economy, uh, the smart meters, the, uh, the, uh, they're announcing everywhere, the 200 square foot coffin apartments where they raise your taxes and energy prices where you can only live in that. I mean, this is really feudalism. Yeah, I think one of the big questions of our time, Alex, is why aren't capitalists defending capitalism? And the answer, unfortunately, I think, is that a lot of people within capitalism have given up on free markets. They they they, they see no future in it. They I, I think that people are are so despairing of the future of the global economy that they are like vultures feeding on the rotting carcass that the remains of our of our global economic system and they are they are using government regulation to pick up what little bits of meat there are of rotting meat there are left in other words no one's sticking up for for small businessmen uh, building up their businesses and 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 uh, uh, unencumbered by by government regulation now what you have is is the big companies teaming up with with the Obama administration and getting getting what they can while they still can which is why you get situations like Solyndra 
uh, what is it, half a billion dollars of, of US taxpayers' money just urinated up against the wall to no purpose whatsoever. Oh, and some of the companies they funded just opened a P.O. box and never did anything. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a, 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 a the inevitable byproduct of a world which no longer believes in, in capitalism. What's left is this disgusting thing called corporatism. These people, some of, some of, the, some of the, worst, the worst apologists for the environmental movement, in my experience, are, are executives from the oil companies. They do not, they really do not care whether energy prices are being driven up. They do not care about people dry, dying in fuel poverty. They pay lip service to this stuff, but actually all they think about is the bottom line. Let's talk about these Trump. numbers. I know Lord Moncton said it would kill a billion people if they put the Copenhagen Treaty in that even raised taxes more in the third world than the West, and it was all a big double cross. But if they had their Agenda 21 plan, if they were able to roll it all out, it'll make those of us here all poor. Poor people, really poor, middle class, poor, uh, upper middle class, just, you know, rich. I mean, it affects everybody except the insiders. What would happen, though, for people in the third world? They're, they're living at subsistence. Isn't this a death sentence if all this goes through? Undoubtedly. We've seen the most terrible... Uh, sto stories going on in 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 certain countries in Africa, for example, where where villages have been cleared and 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 burned out, and people have been killed in order to to make way for these these carbon sinks, these these supposed tree plantations, which are supposed to offset global warming. There was an, uh, uh, something I came upon today. Do you remember, do you remember that, that terrible video that backfired on the internet? The it was called Splattergate. Where yeah, blowing the kids up. Hey, yeah, they're going to murder the, the kids. kids and, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, Franny Armstrong, the, the impeccably middle-class English woman, uh, environmental campaigner who was responsible for that, for that, for that movie, has written this, this, this uh, newsletter to all her Enviro friends. And at the end, she says, should we stockpile cyanide? You think I'm exaggerating, but a close friend of mine who has four children said she plans to kill herself and them when it comes to it. These environmentalists are dangerous. They are talking nonsense Whoa. on the basis of junk science. They are trying to scare us rigid into taking this concerted global action to what ultimately will result in the destruction of the capitalist James, system. stay there. We got to come back. This is breaking. Uh, for those that don't know, they showed students who wouldn't accept carbon taxes blown up by their teacher, hailed by the UK government, and now the, the head of this is saying stockpile cyanide like Joseph Goebbels to uh, kill your children. That's what Joseph Goebbels did. I'm telling you, folks, this is a death cult of loonies. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas, starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught 
going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got a counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Yeah, who's going to go along with the environmental carbon taxes? And those that say no, they kill them. Now, they've called in the Guardian for environmental fascism. They call it that. And it's time to have rationing, of course, for themselves, kind of like the socialists in France, over 100% taxes for the general public this last year to bankrupt people. Uh, but they're all exempt. That's a big scandal. But nobody got in trouble. They have the troops. They have the guns. And uh, Dilling Pohl just sent me. Uh, the uh, the article that one of his friends sent him from her internal Kickstarter program uh, of uh, the uh, lady that was behind that video and that program with 1010 uh, talking about reportedly cyanide. So I want you to read from that because Dr. Eric Pianca at UT broke down crying at the Texas Academy of Sciences. He's gotten national awards and international awards in Europe. Um, in fact, I think Prince uh, Philip or, has been at one of his events. No, it was Prince Charles. And he projected a, a PowerPoint of skulls, a photo actually of the Khmer Rouge. And the FBI even went and talked to him. He's there with the biology department at UT at the time. And he said, it's sad, but he and his family are ready to die. Soon the airborne Ebola will be released. And then I had his graduate students send me threatening emails and I would check their name and find them working at bioweapon labs in white coats, you know, graduating a decade ago. So I found the exception is someone in the biology department nowadays that doesn't say kill all humans or 90% like Pianca. And, that, and so we have her in her own little email uh, uh, attributed to her saying uh, we need to have cyanide ready on hand for our children. Uh, 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 please read from it for folks. Yeah, okay. She writes to her, her fans. She says, you've probably heard the appalling news that for the first time in human history, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has just passed 400 parts per million, which means that we are heading for an even worse scenario than the one we depicted in The Age of Stupid. That was a film she made, uh, you know, another Enviro scare movie she made earlier on. Um, and she says, so what the hell are we all going to do now? 
Should we pile pressure onto the UN in the hope that they defy all expectations and finally make the international agreement needed to slash global emissions? Should we start a national strike, bringing the country to a standstill until the government goes onto a war footing on climate change? Should we all go into survivalist mode, buying up guns and fortifying our homes? It sounds extreme, but it's not a coincidence that people working on climate change are buying pieces of land far away from centers of population to move their families. And on and on she goes like this, and then she mentions this friend of hers, this friend, she says, should we stop past cyanide? You think I'm exaggerating, but a close friend of mine who has four children said she plans to kill herself and them when it comes to it, in a Goebbels style. Isn't it great? Simply amazing. We're going to show a text document of that newsletter on screen. This is really like a hail bop cult. And and, and, and and meanwhile, they're not worried about any of the real issues that are going on uh, because I, I, I'm concerned about nuclear weapons proliferation. Some of the GMO stuff's real, a real problem. But I mean, they're just, we've got to tax carbon dioxide. But then the obvious lie, even NASA and all the scientists that have done ice core, mud core, they all know that carbon dioxide has, we're in a carbon dioxide low range. I've seen reports that it's been over a hundred times higher before. Uh, and, and I mean, what are they talking about? Oh yeah, absolutely. In the, in the Holocene optimum, it was, the, the, there were many times more, uh, there was significantly more carbon dioxide there is now. And guess what happened? The, the earth was much greener than it is now. Indeed, the fact that CO2 has been ri rising these last, last, last few decades, uh, uh, what's happened is that the planet has got much, much greener. It's easier to grow vegetation with high CO2 levels. That's why in industrial greenhouses, they pump in, in significant quantities of CO2 to help the tomatoes grow and so on. CO2 is our friend. CO2 is plant food. Uh, any, any serious scientist knows this. By the way, can I credit my excellent friend, Philip McAleer, director of a fantastic film called Frack Nation, who sent me that, that that, that scary email from Franny Armstrong, and I can also point out, Alex, this is this is this is what shocks me about about that Splattergate movie that you, that you we saw earlier on, and, and and this woman, the people involved in this were not kind of your average scary eco-fascist loons. These were respectable people, like Gillian Anderson, you know, the the girl from the X Files, the actress. She was in 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 the Splattergate movie. Tom York, Radiohead, that. You know, they they did the soundtrack to it. They you had famous football players from from various various. And teams. they mean. I mean, the main thing is a lot of people they get involved mean well, and oh, they so mean it just so well. They but can. but then but have you not noticed in the leadership of these groups, it's really more like a eugenics death cult. I think it is a eugenics death cult, and and actually, it's no coincidence that that a lot of the people who were big into eugenics in the forties and fifties graduated to environmentalism in the 60s and 70s. Oh, they so, admit that that's what they they changed the name of the journals over to that. They admitted that was the strategy. Yeah. At the heart of environmentalism is a deep misanthropy, a deep suspicion of the human race. This this generalized feeling that we do not belong on the planet. We should we should really do the planet a favor and, and wipe ourselves all well, out. Right, let's be clear. We those of uh, we don't belong. We're only there to pay taxes and serve the kleptocrat control freak class. They are the guardians. They they need to continue on. Oh yeah, Ted Turner will inherit the earth, of course, while the rest of us while the rest of us die. I mean, Ted Turner's buying up whole swathes of America, <laughs> while 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 we're all driven into poverty because of of the environmentalist causes. Yeah, what do you make of Prince Charles saying, "Don't take a hot shower," and then getting money for to heat their uh, their palaces, and then old ladies have to get on buses to stay warm, as yeah. came out last year because their gas is turned off. I mean, how does a prince? with literally billions of, of pounds of, of, of stuff uh, come out and tell people when he's got dozens of jets and valets and all this that we shouldn't be able to take a hot shower. Yeah, well, the scary thing is, Alex, that this guy is our future king. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping the Queen will reign forever so that so that Prince Charles never gets to take over because it, it is extraordinary, as you say, the hypocrisy. He jets he jetted over a few years ago to Rio de Janeiro with his massive entourage to tell us that we had just a hundred months left to save the world. He travels in one of the world's most expensive sports cars, an Aston Martin, but hey, it's okay because it's powered by biofuels. And this guy 
AI has the temerity to lecture us on how to live our lives more, more frugally, more eco-friendly. Unbelievable. Let's get back to fracking. Because, again, there are cases where you got the, some of these companies in, in, in areas that are being sloppy, getting into water tables. Uh, but from when I've actually gone and researched, a lot of this stuff, when they're going 10,000 feet down, they're not even near water tables. They've got a concreted in. They're, they're getting the oil. And then, and then you've uh, discovered, and I've seen the articles, that a lot of big oil, the Saudis, the Russians, they do yeah. not want, Texas especially, where I live, getting its own oil. Look, if the Environmental Protection Agency, which I think we can agree is about as close to eco-Nazism as it, as it gets, oh, yes. if even they cannot find serious evidence to show that fracking is, is dangerous, then I think we can be fairly confident that fracking is not a, a real problem. Look, the, reason, the only reason that the American economy right now is not tanking more than it currently is, the only reason is that it has been saved by shale gas and shale oil. That has brought down the cost of energy. It has made American jobs more competitive. And that's on it's record. That's on record. They're not debating that. No, no. It means that no longer is American industry offshoring. It's now, industry is now coming back to America. America has been saved by shale oil and shale gas. And there are lots of vested interests which do not like this. Everything from the green, green movement campaigning for more useless renewable energy like, like ugly, landscape destroying, sleep disturbing, health ruining wind farms. Well, like well hold on, hold on. Panels. Before your cat leaves, I see it in the background uh, behind you there. It, 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 it's about to jump off. Before your cat leaves, uh, the fake PETA people and the rest of it are actually a bunch of eugenicists. And I know because I've had family that actually worked and got into the upper sanctum before they got deprogrammed and woke up and got out of it. Uh, very few have actually gotten into the upper sanctum. All the stuff that exposed PETA a few years ago actually came from my wife, but she didn't write the book on it. They used the book primer to actually do the investigations and find out it was true. In fact, a lot of what she said is not even known because it's so over the top that people wouldn't believe it. But they are the really the animal liberation front, basically. And it's not even about animals. It's about, again, letting government say they have a vote because they vote for the animals. But then they say you shouldn't be allowed to have a cat or a dog and they're going to have to be gotten rid of and that it should be outlawed for you to have uh, a, a domesticated animal. So that also ties into feeding animals. Your own animal is bad. You're going to have to give up your cat. What's its name, James? It's, it's called Runty. Oh, my gosh. Runty. <laughs> Uh, I can tell that cat likes you. Well, what you put it out for the interview, or it would be on the keyboard right now. I, I, I'm trying to get in, in with the uh, with the animal freaks. You know, maybe they maybe they won't come around and kill me when they see that I've got a pet that I care about. But 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 actually, a lot of the environmentalists are saying they're going to get rid of domesticated animals. Well, I suppose you've got sort of various factions: the pro-pet faction and the anti-pet faction. <laughs> maybe they'll they'll slug it out and uh, kill each other. Well, that's a time. nice. Uh, that was a nice cat. Looks pretty friendly. Hello. Shall I let him in? Absolutely. Let's talk yeah. to this Al Qaeda sympathizer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I like cats, but my uh, my wife we got four dogs, and when it went, and and when her uh, when I first met her she had two cats and they got old and died. But I said, look, no more no more animals. So I'm like holding the line at a bunch of fish and lizards my kids have and and oh, four like dogs lizards. and snakes. I like snakes as well. Uh, we're just well. Of course, they don't want global warming. They're, they're hoping for an ice age. The snakes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, it is simply insane. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on and all the points you've made. Uh, you know, we've Thanks, been talking buddy. now for about five, six years. In closing, obviously, everywhere I talk to people on the street and and I see the worldwide, people are waking up that this is really just a power grab and a new priesthood that wants us to have to pay indulgences to them. But even though we were waking people up and winning the statistical battle in the polls, they've already taken over the governments and are just moving forward. A, do you agree with that? And then B, how do we deal with that then? Well, I think, I think the two things we've got in our favor are talk radio shows like yours and, and the internet. It's the, the, the truth is on our side, and that's the glorious thing. No longer can these people close down the argument by, by hiding behind their bastions of authority. We can 
I mean, why did Climate Gate happen? Climate Gate happened because of the internet. Otherwise, these institutions would have would have would have kept all this information to themselves. They'd have said, "Oh no, we, 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 it's a breach of protocol. We can't release inf information." Now the information is out there for those who want to find it, and there is a hunger. People, are, I think libertarianism is actually a, a very powerful movement, and I think I think it's growing all the time. Thanks to shows like yours, thanks to stuff that I write on the internet. I think together we can beat these bastards, Alex. Can I mention one more thing? I, sure. I have a, uh, there's another website I write for called bogpaper.com, B-O-G-P-A-P-E-R.com. And that, that, that uh, includes some of my more out there libertarian stuff. We're, we're fighting back. We're not going to let these, these, these people uh, crush us because they are evil and we are the, the keepers of truth and we believe in freedom. Uh, and freedom is a cause worth fighting for and dying for. Well, absolutely. And, and when you break in politically into what these people really think, you're like, wow, we've heard of these people before in history. And I, the, the, the Hitler analogy is overused, but he was a socialist, eugenicist, uh, enviro nut. Uh, I think, I think, well, we don't have to use Hitler. We can talk about ourselves as we are like the, 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 the Greek states against the Persians at Salamis. You know, the, the, the world's fate hung in the balance, balance then, but who won Salamis? It was the it was the the freedom fighters, the Greeks. It wasn't the the, the Persian tyrants. That's absolutely, uh, absolutely. I just think we have to realize these are not liberals. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I consider myself to be a classical Thomas Jefferson style liberal. Yeah. And and these people are the opposite of that. And I'm sick of them stealing the the label liberal. They are not liberal. They are authoritarian control freaks and, and there's always been that divide between between the puritan control freaks and the freedom lovers and um well let's just hope the good good guys win all right james dilling poll great to talk to you we'll talk to you again soon thanks alex bye-bye all right there he goes along with his carbon emitting cat that cat has flatulence and it eats food it eats meat which is bad for the earth so i call for his cat to be executed along with the hitler dog and by the way, I'm, I'm meant to tell Dillingpole, no kidding, they're banning paper bags. You can't say the word uh, brown paper bag day uh, in Seattle or you're a racist or the word citizen. By the way, I played that in the first hour. That article's up on Infowars.com. I am not joking. I mean, this is the, this is the out of control uh, stuff that we're uh, talking about here. Briefly, uh, I wanted to, well, when we come back in the next segment, I will refocus and get to the news. There's a bunch of big breaking news that is up on Infowars.com that I want to uh, get to when we come back. But just very, very briefly, please remember that we have the new August magazine out that's talking about political correctness and brainwashing and the race war they're trying to start. Very powerful. That's just th the cover. A bunch of other issues are covered in the August issue. You can get a 12-month subscription. It's a great gift subscription to give friends and family 12 big color magazines coming to them. If that won't wake them up, really nothing will. Give it to your police department. Give it to your local library. Uh, we sell them at cost because it's an outreach. You can also buy them in bulk at cost. I printed 30,000 extra of the July issue that has 10 free bumper stickers in it. So uh, get that while supplies last as well at InfoWarsStore.com. And please don't forget, it's the water that the globalists are adding all the crud to to carry out their eugenics operations. And it's the water regardless that's so toxic, whether... You think it's fracking or the Easter Bunny. The point is you need to get a ProPure, the best gravity-fed filter out there. 10% off with promo code WATER. One place, InfoWarsStore.com. That's InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, there's not just the nightly news, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and the radio show. There is the Sunday radio show, 4 to 6 p.m. I'll be live, as I am most Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. It's always there. Sometimes the best W last month or and a half or so I've been live. So prisonplanet.tv as well tonight with the nightly news. Seven o'clock central. One membership is 11 memberships. Now you can watch the Alex Jones show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15 day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.